Shilpa, you have recently launched a book, The Great Indian Diet, and we all lead such stressful lives. We're running from place to place, no time to really think about what to eat, when to exercise, and basically just look after ourselves. So um, can you tell us a little bit about what motivated you to write a book of this much talked about, debated issue with so many solutions, but somehow nothing works for anyone? Um, so could you just uh, share a little bit with us? A very good afternoon to everyone present. Thank you, Zahabia. And I would first and foremost uh, like to apologize. There was a slight miscommunication. I thought I was meant to be here at 12.45, 1. But obviously, we went wrong there. But um, nevertheless, I'm here now. Yeah, it, um, you know, it really wasn't con uh, contrived, Zahabia. It just happened naturally. And I really believe that I was meant to do this, this book because it was time that I played a uh, catalyst in making people realize it was so easy to look after themselves. I've always said this and I've harped on the point of uh, how the world is uh, more weight obsessed than health obsessed. And if you tell someone that they can lose weight, they will try it. And most people have issues with weight loss and um, especially mothers, new mothers. So to actually lose that weight after your pregnancy is such an uphill task. And I went through the same emotions after my baby had put on 32 kilos. I thought I was never going to be myself again, never get my body back. And for me, it was even more scary and daunting because uh, I was always synonymous with good health and having a good body and sounding very immodest right now, but uh, <laughs> that was my job to, you know, uh, look that way. And uh, I just realized it was actually really easy to do if you just had a single mind, uh, you know, single minded goal oriented focus and the right nutrition plan. And actually it was about a lifestyle modification. That's something that I have practiced, that I've lived by. And I also have to say that unfortunately, despite being in this country and you know, being a very proud Indian, I meet a lot of people who don't believe in what we have or the power of Indian foods. And there are also a lot of mis you know, uh, misconceptions and preconceived notions with Indian food and curries and whatever. So when I see uh, a photograph of Madonna on Instagram, talking very proudly about her putting clarified butter on her gluten-free toast, which is, by the way, ghee. Uh, and when I go to London and I go to Holland and Barrett and I see the first shelf uh, stocked with coconut oil and clarified butter, I feel the West values it more than we, than we do. And fortunately, we, we tend to run after what the, you know, what the, West seems to do. So I just wanted to, in a very small way, want, want, you know, talk about how easy it was to lose weight one. More importantly, talk about a lifestyle modification plan, which is so needed in today's uh, life that we lead. We are so stressed out with wanting to, you know, achieve a goal, wanting to reach a certain position, uh, reach from point A to point B, which has become really difficult thanks to the traffic. We've forgotten about being in touch with nature, forgotten about uh, how important it is to eat the right stuff, forgotten the importance of spices in our country, the power of food. Food can actually be medicine. You know, we wouldn't need, I'm not, they want to kill me after this, we wouldn't need these doctors. <laughs> and, I, and honestly, I think, they would want that even more. They would, it would actually make their life easier because we've complicated our lives with complicated foods and bad eating habits, not breathing the right way. Uh, how many of you actually take time out and concentrate on breathing? That glow shows on your face. 
She's the only one that's glowing in this room. So that's what I'm saying. See, kya baat hai? I'm very proud of you guys. So I just wanted to bring focus back to all the simple things that we have practiced for time immemorial. The West wants to copy us, and we are running after quinoa and olive oil when we have ghee and rajma and dudhi. You know, we don't value those things. So my idea of writing the book was just that, trying to, uh, and unfortunately also for us, we belong to this generation where we ever have a question to ask or we have a problem or we want a, a free solution, we go on the internet and we go into Google. So there's some two crore sites that open up if you go into weight loss, how to lose weight. So out of those two crore sites, it's actually scary how many sites you shouldn't even go to. Because if you do those things, you'll be damned. <laughs> so I really wanted to do this for those people who firstly can't afford a nutritionist, who firstly don't have, for a layman who, who doesn't know how to make, take that first step towards making that lifestyle modification, towards, and you know, the onus also lies a lot on the woman. Because we are homemakers, what we decide on uh, in terms of a menu in the kitchen is what your family eats. And you can actually safeguard their lives and make them feel better in the long run with the decisions you make. So I just wanted to make it easy. So cutting the long story short, that was the idea behind the book and um, yeah, you know, my husband is British and he always says there's no country in the world that has the word great before, you know, their country, which is true. Great Britain. <laughs> so I was like, uh, so I have to call it the great Indian diet. That's how the, the birth of this book happened. <laughs> um, so it sounds a lot like your book is about really making life win. And um, what would be the three top superfoods in Indian in the Indian cu cuisine or Indian foods? Well, I swear by ghee, homemade ghee, and I've actually given people the recipe. It's so easy to make. My mother has made it all her life for us. I continue to make it for my son. So ghee, top on the list, great for joints. Yeah, I was gonna Okay, great for digestion. You know, it has something called butyric acid, so it actually lines your stomach and it aids metabolism. Um, Coconut oil, I'm Mangalorean, I swear by it. Coconut oil has also been a revelation uh, in the West for Alzheimer's. So I only cook my food in coconut oil. And uh, it would be a toss between flax seeds. Most people are allergic to it. I don't know why there are so many allergies now. So curcumin, uh, which is a der derivative of uh, turmeric, turmeric. Haldi, simple haldi, great usage uh, in our Indian food. And actually most of us are, we're a race that's, that's quite healthy. It's only this generation. I really want to go back to the times as recently as 70 years ago. We used to eat healthier till then. After that, I think aerated drinks and junk food and all the, yeah, I don't want to take names, I might get sued. <laughs> But uh, I just feel we've complicated our lives with that. But if we just stick to the simple, simple stuff, our lives will become far more simpler. So Dr. Mudit Khanna, um, just a healthy diet or are there any healthy food? Um, backache, knee pain, any kind of aches and pains uh, with your hectic schedule, uh, work life? No, of course. I mean, I'm not superhuman. <laughs> I am human. And uh, I actually started doing yoga 15 years ago because I suffered with cervical spondylosis. I had a terrible C4, C5 injury while trying to lose weight in the gym. And I was trying to do crunches and I was watching the television. And as obviously, it also taught me that while you're doing crunches, you're supposed to be looking up and not in front. <laughs> so um, I was quite bad and I started yoga because I had to heal myself because it's the only holistic way of actually uh, giving your body some kind of exercise and stretching and 
you know, also calming you down. And in a strange, odd sort of way, it's also kind of therapeutic and physiotherapic. So, um, yeah, I started it because of that. So, yeah, I've had knee ailments. I've had, uh, because see, we've, we've, we've done so much in terms of, you know, traveling, dancing. There's been so much wear and tear. I used to be a state level volleyball player. Um, I've done, I've just, you know, worked it out too much. But uh, with God's grace, I think I've been able to um, get, over, get over those ailments and problems. And they do surface up sometimes, you know. Uh, also happens with uh, a lot of stress. They can be triggered with that. And um, I just, I think inclusion of ghee in my diet, which I religiously do. My lunch is um, incomplete without dal, chawal, ghee, sabzi. And I've also converted to vegetarianism, which is very hard. <laughs> I'm a Mangalorean, you know, so I need my, my machi, I need it. But uh, I've given it up because I really believe it's important to, um, to shock your body sometimes also. You know, otherwise your body gets very bored. So yeah, so I want to see how, how my body feels. I actually feel much lighter. So yeah, maybe it's a good thing. So Dr. Nene, um, I think everyone suffers from a backache um, at some point, question to make a choice. Um, so everyone's obsessed about weight loss. Let's not beat around the bush. Um, and the question is always, is diet more important or is exercise more important? So if you had to choose one of the two, to diet or to exercise, if someone can't do both, which one would it be? You know, that's a really interesting question. So I'm only going to tell you as it is. And it, this, is, this is the truth. It's 70% diet and 30% exercise. And that is the truth. Most people think that, you know, they'll go to the gym, they'll slog it out, sweat it out, and they think that, oh, and then they'll come and they'll eat junk. And they're like, but you know, I walked out in the gym for two hours. And I'm like, but you're not eating right. They're not sleeping right. You know, they've got erratic schedules. They're drinking. There's some people who, who kind of live to eat. And there's some people who just eat to live. So I belong to the latter. And uh, I'm very middle class when it comes to eating. So I really believe that uh, that's how you should be. So you break your fast with a interesting breakfast, have the heaviest meal in the daytime, and you eat anything that you want to before 7.30. You'll be very healthy. And don't eat, you know, there's some people who, who eat very healthy, they'll have a salad and then suddenly at 11 o'clock they'll feel hungry and they'll eat cornflakes with sugar. So I'm like, what kind of a diet is this? So I really think it's all about a lifestyle modification. So when I say even if you do not exercise, but you keep yourself active, there has to be something that is increasing your metabolism. You know, if you're going to be sitting in front of the TV and eating very little food, you know, your muscles aren't working. Um, you're, you're, you're not going to feel hungry. So I really think you just lead a life where you just breathe right. You eat uh, the quantity that your body needs and that you want to eat, and never have a weighing scale. Really, I am against this whole uh, thing of going on the weighing scale and looking at your weight. I think most people lose interest in weight loss because they realize that after three days, after they've walked like one kilometer every day for three days, they, they're like, they look at the weighing scale and they're like, oh, I'm not lost weight, so forget it. This is not working for me. <laughs> so I just think just chuck your weighing scales out don't be obsessed with weight because that's going to increase your stress levels, that's going to increase cortisol and that's going to slow down your metabolism. It's very like technical and scientific and it's logical. So just be happy and be grateful. That is the most important thing. So if you're just grateful for the food that's in your plate and if you chew it right, coming back to no TV day, there are lots of people who are watching the television while eating. And I'm very against that. And they, they do that with their kids. Put on the television, feed him. 
you know there are there is a research that they've done where it is proved that the food gets digested only i think only 70% of your food gets digested when you're watching a television or you're not concentrating on what you're eating if you're doing some other activity there are most people on their mobiles while they're eating so i just feel the art of feeling good about what is going into your body comes from the attitude of gratitude one and concentrating on what you are eating chota portion ho bada portion ho immaterial what you are eating has to be eaten with concentration eaten with gratitude and you lead a very healthy life so that's just the bedrock of good health i believe that i think that's a perfect uh, closure of just being grateful for what we have um and before i uh, open it to the audience for questions um i'll give you the chance to ask any questions to our doctors if you'd like to and if not then we can have questions from the audience for either of them If you could just raise your hands, uh, somebody with a mic will come over to you. Oh, he wants to ask me something. Okay. Doc, please. Basically, what's your exercise protocol? Diet, we all understand. I mean, I ran 10k last night and came home and had one Snicker bar and a Twix, and that summed it up. That you know changed it all. So, what's your exercise protocol? Like, what do you do other than yoga? Is there something? Because yoga cannot be a panacea, isn't it? You know, when I was uh, obviously when there is lot more of weight, when you when you've got to lose that and you have that benchmark, like when I had to lose 32 kilos with my child, I did yoga, I did uh, core strengthening exercises, and I coupled it with a bit of cardio. But I did that only four times a week. But my diet was very clear. So I had brown rice, I had lots of eggs. It was uh, obviously protein. and carbs and more uh, fiber fiber rich but now i don't need to do that much so for me it's just yoga and when you have a 3 and a half year old your cardio is there only <laughs> so <laughs> just running after my child just keeps me fit really and when it's a boy it's even harder because it's it's hard work <laughs> so yeah so it's it's a good uh, mix of a good lifestyle modification because i don't drink i don't smoke i i understand what i'm eating so you, you will not believe it i haven't worked out in the last 4 weeks i've just started doing my yoga again in the last 4 days because i've just not had the time you're in the midst of so much work there was diwali there was this book release and you know you're dealing with business and appearances so i may stand here and sound like oh my life is very like calm and it's all like in order and i'm also a full time uh, mother so it's and a homemaker so that's a full time job already so i just think that at the end of it all you have to prioritize and when i don't have the time to work out it's concentrating on my what i'm eating what's going into my body So that's all. So I'm just aware of what I'm eating. So that's really the key, moderation. Audience, yeah. So you talked about diet. You talked about exercise. But in diet, what is the percentage of carbohydrates? What is the percentage of proteins? And what is the percentage of vegetables, which you have not said anything? If you can throw some light on that, it will be good thing. Uncle, that's a very valid question, and it's for people like you that I have written this book. <laughs> so I want everybody to please buy it. But like I've mentioned in the book, it's very clear that the Indian thali is. is the um, the most complete food because you've got your vitamins you've got your uh, fiber you've got your um, protein in the dals you've got your calcium in your paneer the uh, yogurt so it's it's a really well rounded uh, and your fiber in your brown rice or rice or whatever you want choose to eat bajra wheat uh, roti so it's the most complete meal in terms of uh, uh, what do you call it a balanced meal plan 
So whatever you're eating at home is the most complete meal if you are eating it right. So for finer details, you must buy the book. <laughs> Obviously, no questions now. So um, I, I'll just add on. So what we have been told so far is that everybody can go home and have lots of ghee. Not lots, <laughs> not lots. Yeah, One so minute. Let I me just correct I, myself. I, I thought we'll just get that <laughs> clarified. No. So yeah, that's a very good question, Doc. I have uh, a tablespoon of ghee in the afternoon. And uh, that's what keeps me going. And whatever my vegetables are cooked in, it's a bit of... Uh, see, you know, Indian food doesn't require that much oil. It's a very uh, weird notion that people have that we cook with a lot of oil. But if you see our home food, our dal is just cooked with water. And then you temper it with uh, a tablespoon of... Uh, ghee we used to now they use oil uh, I don't know why so yeah and then the even the veggies they can just be steamed and then again tempering is required you can just put your onion tomatoes uh, use a bit of oil and just steam it with, 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 with a bit of water and I don't like vegetables to be overcooked so so yeah, you've, you've got it all. So I really think that even if you just stick to having one, one tablespoon of ghee every day, nothing is going to go wrong with your weight. Ayurveda puts you on a diet of 12 spoons of ghee a day and they will promise you that you will lose weight. So they say the easiest way to lose weight is a culmination of fat and protein. Most people get it wrong. They eliminate the fat and carbs. And they'll say, oh, only protein, protein shakes. I've never had a protein shake in my life. And please quote me on that. I've never had a protein shake in my life. So even in my fittest, even in my, I mean, right now I'm not showing my muscles. This is without protein. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't understand this concept of complicating our lives. Are you becoming a bodybuilder? Then yes. You need some protein that is more than... How closely and how well is Mr. Raj Kundra following your suggestions on diet? He's the only man I can't convert. <laughs> so basically the whole world is going to follow the great Indian diet but my husband. But you know, in all honesty, I have to say, he used to be um, overweight. He was 105 kilos. So all the pictures that you get to see of Raj Kundra now are when he's 89 kilos which is nearly, yeah, 25 kilos down. So I made him chase me so hard that he lost weight. <laughs> yeah, so I just think that it has to come from within. So as a wife, I try not to, um, it can be a little preachy, you know. And sometimes we as uh, uh, wives are always taken for granted. Not sometime, every time. All the women here will agree. So he has his phases where he goes into extreme being careful. Okay, Shilpa, now you have to take care of my diet. So I'll send it to him and then he's like, okay, now I want to eat butter chicken. So I'm like, okay, you'll get the butter chicken. So it's, see, your life is in your hand, your health is in your hand. How you want to lead it is your choice. My duty is to tell you that this is, this is how easy it is. The choice is left up to you. Ma'am, uh, I'm your big fan and I followed the Big Brother UK show of yours and you, uh, under one roof, uh, cooked yourself, cooked uh, uh, diverse cultures, for, for diverse culture celebrities, food, uh, our Indian diet. So what was their feedback for our Indian diet? They just ate it because I was their uh, glorified uh, cook in the house and they didn't have a choice so they had to eat the food <laughs> but uh, the chicken curry became very famous but while you reminded me of uh, the the Big Brother house, I have to share this incident with you. We had a housemate, uh, Dirk Benedict. And uh, every day, he was a very famous actor. He was in the A-team as the face. He was called the face. Every day, uh, out of whatever ration came out, the only one thing that came for him specifically was red uh, legumes, you know, uh, rajma and brown rice. So he got that as his ration. And we thought that, you know, oh, Big, Big Brother's being very like uh, partial towards him and why is that? 
And then one day I asked him, and every day he only made that for himself. He didn't eat anything that I cooked. And um, he ate that for lunch. He ate that for dinner with sea salt and pepper, and he did put some spices into it, which I had ordered from Big Brother. And one, I mean, after one week, I was like, "Don't you get bored of eating this?" And I'm Indian, and he's eating brown rice and rajma. And I asked him this, and he then told me that he suffered with third stages of cancer. He had prostate cancer, and he's cured now. And he only got cured with brown rice and um, uh, legumes, devoid of any sugar in his diet, and that is. how powerful indian foods are it can actually work as medicine that is how i started this entire conversation so we don't value it you can actually cure yourself of any ailment your body is meant to um, cure itself we we reduce our immunity by feeding it antibiotics see a cold is going to take Six, uh, seven days, anyways, with or without antibiotics. They say, "Na, it's going to take you a week if you don't have antibiotics, and it'll take you seven days if you have antibiotics." So, the choice is again yours. बावजूद मैं आई हूँ नो टी वी डे को सपोर्ट करने के लिए क्योंकि ये जो वर्खाट ने इनिशिएटिव लिया है वेलनेस प्रमोट करने का और हेल्थ को प्रमोट करने का मुझे लगता है बहुत ही इम्पॉर्टेंट है और एज एज अ सिटीजन ऑफ दिस कंट्री एंड एज समी हु रियली वैल्यूज हेल्थ एक कैटलिस्ट बनना बहुत ज़रूरी था मेरे लिए तो मैं बहुत हंसी खुशी आई हूँ जहाविया को अपना सपोर्ट दिखाने और हाँ मुझे लगता है कि अगर एक ऐसा दिन है जहाँ पे हम बोल रहे हैं कि नो टीवी डे तो इसके पीछे एक बहुत बड़ा रीज़न भी है क्योंकि बहुत सारे लोग लोगों के पास टाइम नहीं होता लेकिन टीवी देखने के लिए बहुत सारा टाइम होता है और आई थिंक समटाइम्स इट्स इट्स नाइस नाइस टू जस्ट बी इंट्रोस्पेक्टिव टू जस्ट टेक सम टाइम आउट जस्ट बी यू नो कनेक्टेड विद नेचर और uh, सबसे ज़्यादा तो जो खाते वक्त टीवी देखते हैं वो सबसे बुरी बात है तो मैं उसे बिल्कुल ही प्रमोट uh, नहीं करती और आज के दिन ही नहीं आई जस्ट थिंक कि किसी भी दिन पे खाते वक्त टीवी नहीं देखना चाहिए और अपने बच्चे को भी नहीं दिखाइए क्योंकि उसका जो डाइजेशन प्रोसेस है वो वो स्लो डाउन हो जाता है ओके लाइक यू सेड इट्स टीवी डे एंड नो टीवी डे एंड वी लाइक चिल्ड्रंस यूजुअली टेंड टू वॉच कार्टून नेटवर्क्स एंड मोस्टली हैविंग फूड यस सो हैव यू एक्सपीरियंस एनीथिंग विद वी आर लाइक यू हैव टू से नो नो टीवी टुडे वी डोंट एवर फीड हिम फूड विद विद द टीवी ऑन वी डू नॉट एंड ही इज ओनली अलाउड टीवीज टीवी ऑन ऑन संडेस and sometimes on saturday evenings because uska holiday hai to wo abhi usko pata hai ki mamma papa abhi allow nahi karenge tv aur kisi din pe because he sleeps at 8:30 9 you know so aur ha wo zid karta hai ya parents ko kya tip dena chahoge kyunki children usually sunte nahi hai uh what lekin, do you do for that lekin hum parents hai to uh, बच्चों बच्चों को kuch pata nahi hota jo hum log sikhayenge wahi bacche uh, sikhenge तो अगर हम लोग बैठ के टीवी देख रहे हैं और खा रहे हैं तो उनको भी लगेगा कि ये सही चीज़ है तो आई रियली थिंक कि पहली बात तो टिल दी एज ऑफ फाइव प्लीज डोंट शो योर किड्स एनीथिंग अग्रेसिव एंड यू नो बिकॉज दैट डेफिनेटली वर्क्स ऑन द ब्रेन कि बच्चों को पता नहीं है टू डिवाइड यू नो हाउ टू सेग्रीगेट बिटवीन वॉट्स राइट एंड वॉट्स रॉन्ग एंड वॉट्स रियल एंड वॉट्स प्रिटेंड एंड ये हादसा मेरे साथ भी हुआ है यू नो बिकॉज वियान को अवेंजर्स बहुत पसंद थे और ही वॉज गेटिंग वेरी अग्रेसिव और हमने फिर हमने डिसाइड किया हमारे प्रिंसिपल ने हमसे कहा कि यू नो इट्स नॉट अ वेरी गुड थिंग टू डू दिस टू अ चाइल्ड बिफोर द एज ऑफ फाइव बिकॉज देन ही अंडरस्टैंड द डिफरेंस बिटवीन राइट एंड रॉन्ग सो इट्स माई एडवाइस टू ऑल दोज पेरेंट्स हु डोंट नो दिस वी माई थिंक अरे बच्चा है कुछ नहीं है लेकिन हम तो अच्छे खासे ठीक ही 
हुए हैं अभी ना आई थिंक वी टर्न आउट रियली वेल विदाउट टू मच टी वी इन आर लाइफ एंड आई एम शो वेन यू अर यू आर अ चाइल्ड आई डोंट थिंक योर पेरेंट्स ऑल्सो शो यू दैट मच टी वी और जो कार्टून तब दिखाई दिखाते थे टेलीविजन पर और जो अब देखते हैं हम बहुत ही अग्रेसिव है मुझे लगता है नेचर में और उसे हम लोगों को इंकरेज नहीं करना चाहिए हमें हमारे बच्चों के साथ क्योंकि उनको बेटर पता नहीं है Lots of activities are going around, so no TV day. Many children are participating in that. Will we see Vyan participating in any any of the activities these two days? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Vyan is very busy with his social life, with his birthday parties. Yeah. Or, uh, ha, no, no. Shifa, Shifa ji, Jana, say that like you have told us that we Indians have to watch all things in Western people. आईने से देखने की आदत पड़ चुकी है क्योंकि अपने पास इतना कुछ है वो लोग हमको सिखाते हैं कि अरे आपके पास इतना सारा चीजें हैं आप उनकी तरफ क्यों ये प्रोस्पेक्ट हम चेंज नहीं कर सकते अपने माइंडसेट चेंज नहीं कर सकते मैंने कोशिश की है अपने बुक के थ्रू द ग्रेट इंडियन डायट जो अभी अभी लिखा है हमने और अभी नंबर वन पोजिशन पे है पिछले दो हफ्तों से तो मुझे लगता है कि लोग एक्सेप्ट कर रहे हैं वो जानते नहीं है इसके बारे में तो अगर ब्रांड एम्बेसडर नहीं है इस चीज का ये दिखाने के लिए क्यों मैं हूँ ना द ग्रेट इंडियन सो शिल्पा वी ऑल नो दैट स्ट्रेस अफेक्ट्स आर लाइफ एंड अफेक्ट्स आर हेल्थ सो यू नो यू आर अ बिजनेस वूमेन राइट नाउ सो हाउ डू यू हैंडल योर स्ट्रेस लाइफ एंड नो बैलेंस योर हेल्थ सी इट्स हाउ यू व्हाट योर पर्सपेक्टिव इज अबाउट स्ट्रेस एंड इफ यू स्ट्रेस अबाउट स्ट्रेस and there are some people who stress about not having stress kare <laughs> <laughs> stress nahi hai aaj i just think that um, whatever in life happens happens for a reason and that reason is for the best so if you know that at the back of your mind wo mere zindagi ka mantra raha hai to buri se buri cheez ho achhi se achhi cheez ho usko bhi jana hai aur uh, you know that that's that's how life is going to be so you have to You have to just uh, be who you are with a positive approach and with gratitude that you have good health. Okay, uh, that's most Shilpa, important. Being an actress and uh, business woman, you have to travel a lot. Mm. So, how do you maintain your diet at that time? Look, in life, if you have to do anything, if you want to do it from the heart of your heart, and if you have dedication, there is nothing that you can't achieve. So, you have to go anywhere. You have to go to any place where you can go. ऐसी जगह तो जा नहीं रहे हैं जहाँ पे खाना अवेलेबल नहीं होगा चॉइसेस <laughs> हैं आपके पास तो उन उन चॉइसेस में आप क्या चूज करते हैं वो आप पर निर्भर है तो आई जस्ट थिंक यू हैव टू बी हैव द सेंसिबिलिटीज टू नो व्हाट टू चूज और उसके लिए अगर आपको नॉलेज चाहिए तो प्लीज बाय द ग्रेट इंडियन डाइट तो आई थिंक बुखार हॉस्पिटल इसीलिए हिंदुस्तान टाइम्स के साथ पार्टनर किया है नो टी वी डे के लिए हालांकि हम अस्पताल है हम पेशेंट्स पे थ्राइव करते हैं लेकिन हम ये नहीं चाहते कि पेशेंट्स बीमार पड़े सो आर ऑब्जेक्टिव इज दैट लाइफ विंस यू शुड बी हेल्दी एंड आई थिंक द इथॉस ऑफ रियली शिल्पाज बुक एज वेल एज ऑफ आर हॉस्पिटल इज टू रियली सिंप्लीफाई थिंग you know i think keep it simple um i think we have to go back to doing basic things to uh you know just carve out time for yourself uh often now work nahi rehta hai hamare khud ke liye we are more busy about other things other people or even our own aspirations sometimes so i think uh, the purpose is that we should all remember life wins and for life to win uh, for your own life or for Uh, the lives of others that we try to save every single day. Got to keep things simple and um, really not forget uh, uh, the basics. That. Shifa, just one thing. Tomorrow, Yusuf Sahib ko, Dilip Sahib ko, Padma Bhushan diya jaane wala hai. Oh. And this ke baare mein aap kya? Because today is the TV day, so I have to give you the TV day. No TV, no TV day, no TV day, no TV day. 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 जितना भी वो अर्न कर रहे हैं वो कम है 
Okay, so Shilpa Pariniti has uh, done. <laughs> Is she involved in No TV Day? No, but it's fitness. It's regarding fitness. It's regarding fitness. It's it's fitness. Her, it's reduced her. Reduced her. Reduced her. Reduced her. I am very happy, happy for her. <laughs> <laughs> how do you How do you feel that you know people are getting the actresses are getting into fitness and all that? Now, though, everybody is fit. If yeah. you see, uh, I, when I joined the industry, it was uh, rare to see actresses who were uh, <clears throat> you know into working out. <laughs> They were either, I mean, they either they had a great body and at that time, so they wanted, अरे यार थोड़ी सी हरी भरी होनी चाहिए। ठीक है, ऐसे सूट के तुम लोग टूथपिक जैसे लग रहे हो। So I mean, I've had producers who have wanted me to put on weight, but I think now today we've reached a time that people are aware of, you know, how to be fit, and there's so many ways you can be fit. So I think most importantly to bring awareness to the fact that. Whether you have time or not to do any kind of uh, uh, fitness regime, you can actually improve your health with a good diet. That is most important for people to understand. Yeah. Guys, last question, please. Yeah, your book says breaking the uh, fat Indian myth. So you want to elaborate on it and you know? Busting the fat. The busting. Busting the fat, fat myth. Indian. Yeah, the busting the fat myth. It means, um, see, some people think that oh, we are fat, and it's very difficult to lose this weight. And there are some people who have the myths about uh, Indian food being fattening. So I've kind of tried to bust uh, and kind of uh, try to make it very simple for people to understand in simple language that it is very easy. And the first preconceived notion about Indian food being fattening is wrong. So we use, uh, we can actually use the spices to our benefit to lose weight and how uh, valuable coconut oil is and how valuable ghee is in uh, Indian food and for people. I feel th this generation has forgotten about the uses and the value of uh, those properties.